Good morning, everybody. Morning. It's August 3rd already, Monday. Buddy. <laughs> Buddy. Eva, good morning. It's the birthday of? Of? Of everybody? No, only of uh, the Tennessee, uh, the youngest of the uh, six Kleochko uh, siblings. My younger sister's celebrating her, uh, what, 50th birthday today. We wish her an enjoyable day on her uh, 50th birthday. Okay, so, <laughs> geez, we are getting old. That's our youngest. Okay, so today the gospel comes from St. Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 36. This is the story where... Uh, St. Peter attempts to walk on water. Okay? Um, when, when they saw Jesus walking on water or standing uh, by the sea, uh, and, um, uh, and, and they, hey, wait, I'm distracted. Uh, it's, it's a long gospel, so I did, they want to read the whole thing, but we'll read it later when we go to Mass, right? So, um, they saw Jesus at the sea, and then uh, they, were, they were saying, oh, that's a ghost. And then John, John, the disciple Jesus loved, said, no, that's, that's, uh... okay, wait, <laughs> Ava, Ava, I'm a little distracted, I'm sorry. Anyway, when the disciples saw him walking, we better just read it up. <laughs> Walking on the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. And they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke. Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said in reply, Lord, if it is you, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. Peter got out of the boat, right? <laughs> Filled with maybe excitement, enthusiasm. Wow, I'm going to walk on water. <laughs> and began to walk on the water. So he actually was able to walk on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith. Now, what was the contrast? Let's continue talking about miracles. Right? What did we say last week when we were talking about miracles? What was the purpose of the miracles Jesus uh, wrought for people. It was to? To confirm their faith. Right? To confirm what they believed in. Right? From the rising of Lazarus to the, uh, 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 the paralytic that he, that he cured, the blind man, etc. So it was to confirm them in faith. What did Peter do here? How come the miracle of walking in the water did not work? Yeah. <laughs> How come Peter was not able to walk on water? Because he, he had no faith. He doubted, right? He doubted the power of Jesus instead of, uh, instead of already realizing that the first steps were happening. Wow, I am actually on the water, right? This is actually really happening. And instead of being more confirmed in his faith, ah, the wind, the strong wind, and maybe some waves, you know, started rocking his faith. And boom, he collapsed and boom, <laughs> sunk. Lord, help me. And Jesus had to tell him, <laughs> maybe laughing inside of him, you funny, you're funny. Look at you. Look at you miserable nincompoop, you Peter. <laughs> how, how can you doubt? I'm already here. 
I'm already here, right? You saw me already. I'm walking. I'm standing right here. I already, I was the one who told you, come. Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Oh, you of little faith. You know, we can apply these things to us, to ourselves. Our Lord calls us all the time to actually perform great things. He, God wants to work miracles in us. God continues to this day to work miracles in us and for us. You know what? Jesus is only asking for two things. Number one, that we believe that He can actually work miracles in us. We have to have faith. And you know what the second requirement was of Peter? Our Lord told him, come. What was the second requirement for Christ to perform miracles? Huh? Like when he told the paralytic, pick up your pallet and walk. Or the blind man, go wash your, wash your face. What? Or, or Lazarus, when one day he told people, roll back that big stone. Ooh, big stone. How are we going to do that? Roll it back. What did Jesus require? Can you tell me? Huh? I cannot understand you. He required we put the effort. Right? We just need to put the effort. But wait, there's something hidden there. There's a hidden virtue there. Before we even put the effort. What is the virtue we need to implement? Jesus said to Peter, come. Jesus told the paralytic, pick up your pallet and walk. Huh? What? What is the virtue? Obedience. 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 Right? Obey, 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 obey. The refrain that these Kliatsko children hear from their papa every day. Obey, 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 obey. <laughs> Faith, faith, believing that Jesus can do miracles for us is complemented by obedience. We need to obey what Jesus is telling us to do. Eh? Like Jesus commanded the people he was doing a miracle for. Peter, come! The paralytic. Pick up your pallet and walk. The blind man, go wash your face. Lazarus, roll back that stone. People obeyed. That is why miracles happened to them. Their faith got confirmed. Because number, number one requirement is obedience. And that's part of faith. See? Obedience is part of faith. Obedience is the expression, is the virtue that expresses our faith in God. If we do not obey first, that means we do not believe that God can work in us. We do not believe that a miracle and miracles can be done in our souls. Eh? So for us to merit the miracles of God, we need to obey. And you already very, know very well that, you know, the the, uh, the the authority, the authority God uses for each and every one of us would be, well, the different authorities uh, that, that convey the will of God for us. In your own household, it begins with your, with your parents. Your parents are the instruments of the will of God for you, the communication of God. God's will to you okay, is conveyed through your parents. If you don't obey your parents, 
So many things happen. So many things or do not happen the right way if you don't obey. Things get messed up. You end up like Peter. Right? That's why Peter is a very good example of how miracles do not happen and how he does not benefit from supposedly a great accomplishment walking on water. Right? <laughs> because he disobeyed. Right? He did not trust God. Instead of just straightforwardly going for it, he crumbled in fear. Now, that's, that's another part to this. Obedience is necessary, but at the same time, we ha in that obedience, we have to recognize the reason we obey is because we know we don't know everything see we have to realize that we don't know everything in life we don't know everything about the will of god for us that's why we obey authority and by obeying and then putting our own effort part of the effort part of obedience is the effort right then god is going to do the rest god is going to do the miracle because we have to recognize that by ourselves we are incapable of doing all of these great things the great things we accomplish in life it's not all because we are so smart or because we are so skilled or because we are so i don't know uh, 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 um, endowed with all sorts of talents no we have to recognize that a great deal of our accomplishments comes from the grace of God. God is the one working on our souls. God is the one accomplishing the great things that we are accomplishing in life. All we are doing is giving Him a little bit of our cooperation. All we are doing is giving Him a little bit of our effort. And then to trust completely that God is going to make us walk on water. It is not us. It is not our strength. It is not our machismo of, of Peter. It is not the uh, courage. And... No, 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 no. <laughs> it's God who will do the great things in our lives. God is the one who's going to do the great accomplishments in our lives. All he's asking is, number one, we have faith. And that faith is expressed by our obedience. Come, he told Peter, paralytic, pick up your pallet and walk. Blind man, wash yourself. There is obedience. And the obedience means putting the effort. Putting the effort to do the little that God is asking of us to do. So God is not going to make you learn without you putting the effort to study. Without you putting the effort to obey the rules of how you will study. God is not going to make you, uh, 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 um, you know, a, a, a black belt in Taekwondo. <laughs> if you do not put in the effort to practice. If you do not follow the schedule. If you do not ask God's help to do these things. Right? And, you know, these are the, just the more human accomplishments we're talking about but in the grand scheme of things you're not going to become a saint if you don't allow God to work on your soul you're not going to become a saint if you don't learn to obey the whispers of God that comes to you through the people he has put around you to convey his will to you beginning from your parents so let us learn from the example here or should i say from the bad example of saint peter <laughs> who became a great saint right our first pope the head of the church because perhaps after this failure in this gospel message today and uh, by the way, this is not the last failure. He also denied Jesus Christ later on. <laughs> but after all of Peter's failures, which I suppose are many, 
He later learned to have more faith. He later learned to obey. He later learned to follow Jesus Christ all the way through. And that is why he became one of the greatest saints we ever know. Okay, that's it. That's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. For those of you across the, uh, the Pacific and the Atlantic, good night. <laughs> I see some of you watching uh, uh, this broadcast live. So may you have a good sleep tonight. And for the rest of the Americas, good morning, everybody. Have a good day. Have a good start of your week, this week of August 3rd. Okay, bye.